It's Torah Talk. 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 We are witnesses and watchmen of Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. A Torah Institute podcast. Mm -hmm. Hey, brother. Oh, boy. How you going? Hey. Good to see you. We're online. Everything's running. Everything's running. Excellent. Beautiful. Well, they've managed to let us come inside today of the Shrine of the Book. How about that? Wow. This is so awesome. Yeah. I want to know why in the pictures I'm always the one that has to climb up the top. Oh, of course. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, wonderful to see you, brother. Wonderful to see you, yes. Yeah. And, well, uh, uh, you know, what are we going to do today? Well, I think it's important to proceed into the name of Yahusha, since we had so much fun a few days ago doing the name of Yahua. Um, the son's name is just as important, I guess, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, there's a uh, there's an aspect of the father's name that's contained in the son's name. The the son being the the flesh that was born as a result of the begetting of the father. And uh, one of the things that has been going on since the beginning has been in the war in heaven has been over the name and, it, and it, the battlefield is really in the minds of men like when Eliyahu or Elijah was competing over who was the Elohim who was the one that created the heavens and the earth uh, the people that were worshiping according to the pagan processes had removed the name and were doing things that were improper but anyway the I've got a lot of these little, uh, you know, what, what were you calling these? Flashcards. Flashcards. <laughs> Some of them are different colors. Anyway, the uh, the person that or the being that that has been ruling this earth seeks to control and 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 take the place of the true creator, and that it is an identity thief. And that identity thief, of course, is our enemy. He's not really supposed to be in charge. And he's gone by several names. He's got a birthday, actually. His birthday is coming up for the world. It's December 25th. Mm. December 25th is the adversary's birthday. That was the birthday when the sun was reborn. The sun was worshipped in the skies. And uh, he was known as B-A-A-L. H-O-R-U-S and Z-E-U-S and many other names that you can read about. And this uh, identity thief has usurped or stolen away the identity mm -hmm. and has mm -hmm. caused the name to be occulted. And that's, you know, interesting, the word occult means to hide something, to occult it, to uh, give it a, another... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to expose him today. Anyway, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to also reveal the truth, and uh, this is the one of the terms that Yahusha himself used when they accused him of casting out demons in this name. This is a, a form of this name, B A A L. B E E L Zebub is translated in Hebrew as the Lord of the Flies. Ah. Yeah. You imagine, some people have never heard of that word, but uh, it's really the dragon, you know, it's the dragon, known as B-A-A-L, and Yahushua took this name upon his lips to accuse his people, or his pharisaical accusers, of casting out 
they said that he was casting him out in the name of this. But he was not doing that. He was casting him out in his own name, you know. Anyway, it's interesting that that term was used. And, and here's, the, here's the thing. Most Christians that have been, well, a third of the, one of the, one of the three major religions on the planet has been calling on this word. L O R D. That's a translation directly from the Hebrew word B A A L. Now, what is going on? Well, they took his name out of the scriptures and they admitted in the preface that they took it out and they put this word in, and it's actually this Lord of the or Lord of the Flies. It's this B A A L character. So to so to translate to translate means to take the meaning from one language to the other, doesn't it? Right, the meaning. So the meaning of the word B-A-A-L is Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of disgusting because yeah. that's what it means. Now, the, uh, the name of the... Well, let's see, where can we begin? Well, the name of the one that was at Sinai that you know, was meeting with Moshe and the children of Israel, was speaking from the mountain, he came in this name right here. And it's a four-lettered name, as we remember, for, if you've seen the other video. It's Yod, He, Ua, He. Now, this operates as a U, and that's where the, the letters U, V, and W all come from in our language. Hmm. And this is a Y, and, it's, and it, of course, spells from the left to the right. I mean, from the right to the left, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're on the, okay. This is your right. So it starts here, and then it moves over to the hey. This is Yah. And these three letters would be Yahoo. Okay? Now, we're going to hear the word Yahoo in the word, in the name of the Prime Minister of Egypt, or uh, Prime, Prime Minister of Israel, excuse me. Nathan Yahoo. See, Nathan Yahoo is a name, and it's a man's name, and it actually means gift or given by Yahuwah. Now, Yeshayahu is the prophet, and his name means saved by Yahuwah. Or, and it's in the script of uh, the Paleo-Hebrew, or the ancient Hebrew, it's written this way. See, we read it this way, but they read it this way. It's Yash, Yasha, or Yesha, Yahu. Now, this is actually a root. This is a root that means deliverance. Yesha. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. Yesha Yahu is a man's name. They call him Isaiah. It's I-S-A-I-S-A-I-A-H. You know? And it's really a, a, a corruption of this prophet's name. Yesha Yahu was the very first prophet that I read. It was uh, his chapter 53. And it shook me to my roots, as I said in the last episode. But Yesha, you see that I've underlined this word, or these letters, that looks like a W, but it's really the Hebrew, the Hebrew letters for teeth. This is the sheen. And this, you see the, the, the teeth perform the sound of shh. See? That makes an SH sound. This is not a W. This is the SH sound. And this is a, uh, sha, sha, yasha, yahoo, Nathan, yahoo, yesha, yahoo. All right, that's kind of complicated, but you can keep backing that's this great. thing up and looking at it again and again until you get that. But this is the Sinai autograph that contains that, yahoo, it's yahua. That's what it is, the Sinai autograph. And it's written on my shirt right here. yod he u he All right, we've got that covered. Now, this is the Yahoo, as it looks in modern Hebrew. This is a yod he and an Ua. It's not a W. It's a more of a U. Sometimes it's used as an O. But this is yod he Ua in the ancient script. And it's pronounced Yahoo. That's what it is. Natan Yahoo. Yesha Yahoo. It's not Yahoo, okay. <laughs> now we're gonna, we were focusing on the sheen, which is teeth, 
the sh teeth. See the two teeth? And this is, means an eye, you know, like an eye. And that's why it's called an IE. We get the word I from the word, from the letter IE, because it's an eyeball. Yeah. See it? <laughs> yeah. Now they see it. And this is the this is actually Sheen IE, and it's pronounced Sh. Okay. Now, uh, we've got that covered. Now, does that appear in any other words? That's a that's a, that's the thing we have to wonder about. Um, if we go back and look at uh, the scriptures, and we wonder what the name of the Messiah is, it's based on the name of the Creator, because the name of the Creator, even in the footnotes, they'll tell you that it means the Lord is salvation. Now, salvation means deliverance. The Lord is not salvation, but it's 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 Yahuwah that's salvation. Yah, not B A A L. <laughs> anyway, there's two things that we can find. We know that the Messiah had the very same name as the Son of Nun. Uh, actually, there was a man that served under Moshe or Moses. He was a an Ephraimite, and his buddy was. Uh, from the tribe of Yehuda, Caleb or Caleb. Now Caleb and and this man, they called Joshua. Okay, his name is mentioned in Acts seven forty five, and it's mentioned in Hebrews four eight. And underlying the, that text, we find in the Greek letters these word this word in these letters, and they translate it, or transliterate it, they think they're transliterating it, as Joshua. But really, this doesn't, this doesn't in any way say Joshua. But the <laughs> letters, this man's name, <laughs> were the same as the Messiah's name. The Messiah's name was used with these same letters. So all the scholars know that the man that succeeded Moshe, the son of Nun, we're going to call him Yahusha. Or Yahushua, as it's used in the Tanakh, or the what they call the Old Testament. Anyway, this man has the same name as the Messiah, which is really amazing. And so you can back this thing up, back this tape up, or record the recording up, until you can look up those references. And if you have the opportunity to look at the Greek, you'll see that this is the spelling for the, both the Messiah and this man. Now, uh, where does that leave us? It leaves us with these Hebrew origins, because it's not the Greek origins or the Latin origins that matter. The Greek, the uh, the ancient text spells the name Yod He Ua Sheen Ayin. We looked at the Sheen Ayin before, and then. In the, in the more uh, Babylonian script, after they came back from Babylon, they started using this script. It's an Aramaic, and they spell it with this shape. It's still a yod and a he and an ua and a sheen and an ayin. See, the sheen and ayin and, and all these letters, they just change shape a little bit. Hmm. Now, here's another thing. How do you say that word? Well, the sha, as we looked at, this is an sh because it's teeth. Shh. Uh, sha. This is Yahoo. Yahoo. Sha. That's what I've underlined here. See the sha? That's all that's written right there. But we're going to look at uh, other names of other prophets. Elisha. Okay. Elisha. Same thing. Sheen Ayin. I want you to see this so that no one can trick you. They're going to try to trick you, <laughs> you know, on technicalities and say, oh, that Lou White, he's been working at that shop and those demons have been working on it. Look, this is the Hebrew word, okay? It's Aleph, Lamed, Yod, Eli, Sha, Elisha. Okay, it operates the same. It's, an, it's just, they're just letters. Don't be afraid of them. Now, Moshe had originally, the son of Nun, didn't have that name. He had another name. It was just Husha. 
Now, husha is a he, an ua, and a sheen, an ayin. See, the sheen and ayin keep popping up there. See? Mm. Those are teeth. Sh, uh, sh. Yeah, it's, this is who, H U. It's not H W. It's not Hawasha. It's Husha. They, they, in the King James, they call it Hosea. But this is, this is Husha. And it means deliverance. It means savior. Okay, or one who saves. Now, all Moshe did was, he changed this this Ephraimite's name, this son of Nun. He they changed his name from Husha, and that was they added this one letter, and that changed it to Yah, Yod Hey, Yahu, Sha, Yahusha. There it is. You can't argue with it. <laughs> you can say no. The vowels are in there. You have to put vowels in. Well, the Masorets in the 10th century, they were 2,300 years removed from this point. How much do they know? You know? Hey, don't argue with them. There they are. Just look at them and deal with it. Now, look out. We, we don't have to get angry about it. Uh, the Masorets were just as much in the dark as you are. Now, at Acts 4.12, you can mm. go read this. I'm going to read this to you. I've, I've read it. I've put it on the back of this card here. Okay. Now, it says, And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heavens given among men by which we need to be saved. Now, the word saved, or the idea of saved, is deliverance. And deliverance, as we have heard, is in this, is in this root, sha. It's deliverance. And it also is in the word shua. Shua is sheen ayin, or no, sheen ua ayin. And that is a good thing, too, but it's just the root. Now, uh, the, the root is actually yasha, as I, as I explained before. Now, 216 times in the Tanakh, this man that succeeded Moshe, is the spelling is yod he ua yahu sha 216 times. Now, in two instances, it's spelled with six letters, yod he ua shin ua ayin. Now, that's shua at the end. So, yahushua is also correct because it's used twice. 216 times his name is spelled with five letters and it's Yahusha. Twice it's spelled Yahushua. And in one place in Nehemiah, it's actually abbreviated to just Yeshua. And it means deliverance or help. And it is okay to abbreviate, but it's not, it isn't important. I mean, that, that, is, that isn't to deny his name. It's not saying that his name isn't Yahusha. But rather, it's just a shortening of his name, you know. It's like taking the name Michael and shortening it to Mike, and then people arguing, saying, no, his name is not Michael, his name is Mike. No, it's, it's actually both, you know. Yeah. But now, one time in Nehemiah, it's spelled this way. Yod Sheen, that's a Sheen, that's not a W. Shh. For teeth, remember? Yod, Sheen, Ayin, I mean, uh, uh, not Ayin, Yod, Sheen, Ua, Ayin. Okay, so this is Yahshua, and it's spelled in the modern Hebrew, Yod, Sheen, Ua, Ayin. And that's one time. So I accept this as well, because it's in Scripture. So you should also accept it, but... Not because I do, but because it's written in Scripture. So don't be afraid of it, you know. But don't deny that it is actually based upon this, the one at the top, that's used 216 times. And this one is used, uh, whoops, this one is used twice. Okay. And that's just so the Tanakh, isn't it? it? What about that's used in the Tanakh. What about the, the Messianic the, Scriptures? 
Well, that's just it. it, it we haven't found the, uh, I haven't found the Messianic uh, Hebrew scriptures, you know. But um, Acts 4.12 is only one name. So if it's used 216 times, and we know that, they're, that both of these gentlemen had the same name, then we can rely on that fact. Now, who is it that hid this? Well, the identity thief. That's what we were talking about. This identity thief has taken and put himself in there. Now, uh, in the monk, in the in the monasteries, these monks were monkeying around with stuff. And in the in the Middle Ages, which is generally between 500 and 1500 CE, we have this. Uh, Thing that they've inserted. I'm going to show you these, and they they they've been they were systematically destroying the Hebrew, and uh, persecuting the Nazarene. Uh, anyway, they had uh, in the Codex Sinaiticus they substituted these. They took the name of the Messiah out of the Greek text, and they put in these crystal crystalograms. That's what they call. Them. And this is uh, a shortening of the word. This is actually the capital letters. And uh, this is a sigma, and that's a sigma too. But they put a bar over it, and the reason that this bar is over it is because it's called a titlos, a titlos, and it denoted the term that referred to a deity. And but they shortened it because they took the first letter of the name in Greek, and the last letter of the name, and then they put them together, like that, thus eliminating the name, and only a person who was initiated uh, that knew the secret could interpret the name. Now, who would hide the name that's the only name under heaven given among, among men by which we must be saved? Who would hide it? Well, the dragon. That's what we started out saying. You know, the dragon is trying to hide something. Now, they took the word Christos, which is actually a Greek term, and they took the first and the last of that, too, and they put it together, and they called it a deity, too. What? <laughs> you know. Anyway, sometimes you'll see the iota sigma and the chi sigma next to each other, and I'll show you that, too. But uh, it's just wrong. You're not supposed to do that, you know. Doink. What does that mean to you? Well, what does it mean to anybody? Only to the initiated they would interpret this as the first letter of the Messiah's name in Greek and the last letter of the Messiah's name in Greek. And Christos, uh, what? You know, what is that? You know, this is a chi and a sigma. This is an iota and a sigma. Well, you know, that's, that's just messed up. Whoa, there's that fish again. Uh, so anyway, where, we ha where, where does that leave us, you know? This leaves us with uh, a lot of deception. You know, there's, there's been deception going on. And, and Acts 4.12 says there's only one name, not two. But uh, then there's the problem of uh, whether there's two beings or not. You know, that's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking for two Yahuas. But you know what? It's like this. Uh, in reality, we're oriented around where we're at, you know, any of the created beings. And when we're in a particular place, we can't be in another place, you know, like in the sky. We can't be in both places at the same time. But Yahuwah can, because, see, he is actually operating completely different. His orientation, he can be in more than two places. He can be in a billion places. He can be in every place. He can be working on somebody that has leprosy. He can be over here. Uh, he was, uh, it, it, when he was in his own body here on the earth, he saw uh, other people in other places at distances. And he even described what they were doing. And uh, when he told the centurion that his son was going to be okay, or his servant was going to be okay, that, uh, or whoever he was healing from a remote distance, at that very moment, that person was healed. And 
you, in other words, Yahuwah is operating in a completely different way than we do. And when, when uh, we look at uh, Scripture and we say that there's two Yahuwahs, and that the Yahuwah called fire down from Yahuwah in the heavens. Well, that we can't be saying, well, he's like a man. He's not oriented like that. He can call down from an omnipresent, you know, uh, he can be in both places at the same time. He's not two beings. That's just wrong to be limiting himself and making him as if he's a man. He's not, a, he's not limited. He's not anything like a messenger either. Because a messenger has to go from place to place in the heavens. He can't, I mean, a messenger can't be everywhere. You know, they have a temporal being situation. They're immortals. They can't be killed. But they can't be in two places at the same time. They can't ride two horses by, side by side. They can't drive two automobiles. Yahuwah can do that. In fact, remotely, he's controlling all of his people. He indwells us. And it's Yahusha that's doing it because Yahusha is Yahuwah. And that's what we have trouble wrapping our minds around. You know. So, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> it's all because of this identity thief. Yeah. Once he's not omnipresent, you know, he can't be in, in more than one place. But, uh, what we have to overcome, though, is the distortions. And when we have people that say, well, you've got to spell his name with a W. Well, you know, that's, that's actually a distortion because the, the letter W didn't actually start on this planet until around the 13th century. And anybody can look that up. It's a W. And there's no such letter in the Hebrew. Mm. You know? So what about uh, J-E-S-U-S? Where did that come from? <laughs> What's the deal, well, yeah. What's the deal with that? <laughs> That's a Latin form of the Greek, and the, you, you see the Greek. Let me find the card. Let's see if I, if I can find the Greek card. Because those symbols, those uh, uh, uninitiated symbol, initiated symbols you held up, they sounded like they were starting to head into a bit of a J-C thing. There was an I and a C. Yeah. All right. Well, when we look at this uh, Greek, all right, we're, we're, we can't prove anything from Greek. But if we look at the Greek, we see an iota. That's because they didn't have the letter Y. And so they used the substitutionary letter. And then they put in an eta and a sigma and, a, and an omega and an epsilon. And then they ended it with a sigma in order to render the, the proper noun masculine. So there's not really an S at the end of his name at all. But if you look at this name right here, Seuss, in Hebrew that would mean horse. And it doesn't mean and it doesn't have anything to do with salvation. The individual the the uh, ending of his name, Sh means salvation. Uh, I actually I've got a a card here that this is the first part of his name, Yahoo. And then Sha. And it means Yah is our deliverance. You know, that's what it means. And um, that's, his, that's the Messiah's real name. And it is used six, uh, 216 times in the Tanakh to identify the successor of Moshe. And we know they have the same name. But uh, if we just look at Greek... We're not really proving much because that's a distorted language. They don't have the letters. They don't have the sh sound in their le in their alphabet. Now, here's another interesting thing, because if you look at the Talmud, the Talmud has altered the name of the Messiah and for and formed this word, Yeshu. What's the Talmud? The Talmud. <laughs> the Talmud is. Is uh, in the Hebrew it means instruction, uh, the same way catechism means instruction, but it's an instruction. It's, it's actually a, a man-made. It's not Elohim breathed, and it's a bunch of t over 1,200 years 
it's a bunch of uh, Arguments. basically a bunch of decisions that were made by the Sanhedrin, you know, or the group of people that were in in charge of interpreting things. So it's basically a book of uh, 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 it's actually a library of books uh, based upon questions and then the answers based upon Torah instruction and men's traditions, rabbinical traditions. And this word is an acronym where the letters actually stand for words. Yermak Shemo Uzikru. Yermak Shemo Uzikru. Now that word is an acronym. Uh, it forms a sentence that means, may his name be blotted out. Shem is the word for name. Shemo. Yermak, may his name be blotted out. Now that is what the Talmud has for the name of the Messiah. Not good. That's not a source to be looking for truth. Only the inspired Elohim breathed scriptures is a place. So now the root Yahshua the, is Yahshua is different to Yeshua. Is that what you're saying? Well, Yeshua, yeah, you would want to. Uh, you would probably not. I wouldn't condemn that word because of the fact that Yeshua is used once in Nehemiah as a short form. But you can't deny that Yeshua points to the original. You know, it isn't. But that's what people do. They tend to say, no, his name is this. Well, it is, but it's, but it's pointing to the longer version. Now, this is a root of the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language is based upon generally two or three letters as roots. And those roots actually are constituent, they're formed by the meaning of the letters themselves. These letters mean things. This letter means hand, that's yod. This letter means teeth or tooth. And this means eye, that's why it's round. And the, and the form of the letters, you know, are actually what they are. Because this is a yod, and it, and it means the, the, the forehand, you know. And then there's the teeth, and there's the eye. And this root is called Yasha. It's not Yashua. It's just Yasha. That's the way that the name is spelled. See, look at the name of the Messiah. See the, see the sheen and the ayin? There it is. And that's in this word. Sha, Yasha. Now, Yasha is a root, and it means to deliver or to save, the Savior. So if you were yelling for help, if you were a Hebrew, and you were yelling for help, if you fell in some water and you couldn't swim, you'd be saying, Yeshua, Yeshua. You know, that's a cry for help. You know, that's okay. You know, it's a cry for help. But you don't want to take the name of the Messiah, uh, the name of the Creator out, Yahoo, because He is the deliverance, as He says. See, Yah is Yah is our deliverance. Let me let me write that up. Yah, that's these two. Yah is our deliverer or deliverance. It's very very simple. It's so simple, people stumble over it. <laughs> His name means something, but J-E-S-U-S -S does not mean anything in Hebrew. J-E-S-U-S, -S, if you pronounced it in the uh, form that they spell it, it would be Asus, and it would mean Hasus, or the horse. And it doesn't, that doesn't really compute. So it's not, uh, so Yahushua is not J-C's name in Hebrew, is that what you're saying? It's, it's not. not. Hmm. No. No, because, uh, and, and that's important because of one thing, Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12 tells us, now Luke was writing Acts 4.12, there is only one name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved or delivered. So what is the name? See, that's why we're, look, that's why we're doing this, is we're looking for that one name. And that one name has been hidden, as we see, it was hidden here. It was hidden by these people called uh, 
monks, <laughs> and they put it in Christogram form. But Acts 4.12 says there's one name. And now here's another thing, too. And I showed this, I think, briefly at uh, Clement of Alexandria. See, some of the circus fathers were, uh, they were okay dudes because they weren't really malicious. They were just confused. But they had uh, this one guy named Clement, and he formed these five letters in Greek to pronounce the name of the creator. Yahuwah. This is Yah, as we've mentioned before. And then U, Ah. Yahuwah is what he could do. And that's the best he could do. Now, if you, you go ahead and take the Yahoo part and move that into the Greek as the first three or first three letters in the Hebrew, but the first four, four letters in Greek, then it would be Yahoo, and they don't have an SH sound, but it would be Sa, Yahusa. See, the Greek doesn't have an SH sound. So this would be the best that, they, that the Greek language could do with the name of the Messiah. Yahoo, Sa. See, Yahoo is the first three letters in Hebrew. yod he ua it's not Yahoo, it's Yahoo, and then the Greek. But uh, we argue about this. But the SH sound was lost hmm. in the Greek. And that's why we see J E S U S. And they put the S at the end to make it masculine. But that's a Greek rule, that's not Hebrew. So the Messiah never heard his name pronounced J-E-S-U-S. -S. And he didn't put up a Christmas tree either. <laughs> so what? So to the argument, well, they were Hebrew and we're English now, uh, we should, can't we just translate into English? You know, he knows our hearts, you know, can't we just say it in English? What's the problem, Lou? <laughs> well, let me do that for you, okay? Yeah. Here, here's the Hebrew. And here's the English. Fantastic. Straight. It's straight. There's no going through Greek and then going through Latin and then moving around a little bit. It's just straightforward. There's no tricks. Just study that. Look at that. And research it. You know, look at alphabets. A lot of times they call this alphabet Phoenician. You know, but actually the Phoenicians... Uh, were the Israelites. They were sea peoples. That's who they were. The Herodotus named them the Phoenicians. Now, he didn't know who they were. He didn't know they were. He just knew that they were all over the place, and they had colonies. They were a sea empire, and the sea empire was Israel, the tribes. Not just the Jews, but all the tribes, Zebulon and Reuben and Dan. Dan left those way marks like Danube River, the Danes, Scandinavia, uh, Denmark, London, London, there's a D-O-N in there, and it actually D-A-N and D-O-N, like Donald and names like that, those are all the tribe of Dan. But anyway, the Israelites were the Phoenicians, and they call, the, the modern scholars call that uh, script, the Phoenician script, you know, phonaki, or yeah, it's, two, it's two Greek words, Phoenician, but uh, whatever. This is the English, this is the transliteration, the actual sound of this word. And you see that sh right there? Let me see if I've got a yash. Oh yeah, I showed you Nathan Yahu. That's the Yahu part of his name. And then of course the prophet Isaiah, his name is really Yesha, Yahu. And it's spelled this way, going this way, it's Yesha. And you see I underlined the sheen and the i.e. because it's yesha, sha, see, yahoo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a little bit different, <clears throat> but as you refresh yourself with maybe this video and then check it to see if there's errors and, and that, you know, make sure you check because there's a lot of people out there that are running around trying to spell the names of the Messiah and 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 the Creator in uh, all sorts of different wild ways, 
using letters like W. And, and remember, this letter, this is not a W. That's a sheen. But, uh, and at Elisha, we looked at that. See the Sha. This is Aleph, Lamed, Yod. Aleph, Lamed, Yod. Eli, Sha. Which means deliverance. Elisha. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying Yahuwah is deliverance, it's saying my Elohim is deliverance. See? My Elohim is deliverance. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, you know. Yeah, it is amazing. You can actually see it and understand it. You know. Have, have you had people say to you, um, well, such and such was healed in the name of J-E-S-U-S, -S, so there must be power there. There's healings all around the world in the name of J-E-S-U-S. -S. I know there's probably a lot of fake ones, but there's probably a lot of genuine ones too. And a lot of genuine believers say, if it's a fake name, how can there be power in it? Or is it the enemy? Well, you know what? I don't question that because that's one of the things that you don't want to do. And you can't, but you're not going to be able to prove that way, whether there's healing or not, whether that's the correct name, because that's, the error is there. And all you have to do is just be guided into more truth, and you'll abandon the error, because he can't have two names. It says there's one name. And if we look at that and we say, well, is it Greek? Or is it Latin? Or is it English? Or is it Hebrew? Well, the Hebrew meaning of his name means something, but the Latin doesn't seem to mean anything, you know, other than uh, the horse, and that's uh, only if you transliterate it into Hebrew hearing, but uh, I understand that Seuss in, in Latin means pig, so we know that uh, there's something going on, but you see the person that we're talking to of course, people say, well, he knows my heart. He certainly does. And your heart is corrupt above all things. And it's desperately sick. And it needs to have some healing. But uh, if he does cure you, even in spite of that, it's because he saved you and he forgave you and died for you while you were yet a sinner, then, of course, if your lips are not being purified um, yet, then he still might heal you. But the thing of it is, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9, says that, that he's going to remove the babbling from our lips and he's going to put a pure lip on our, on our bodies and we will call upon his name. And that's a good thing. So if we call upon the, the errant names that were given to us by the dragon, then we're going to remain in a state where we're going to not get much more. But if we continue uh, to learn and progress and, and, and push forward and, 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 and pant for his knowledge and his, and his truth and accept it, then he's going to give us even more, you know. But I've been pressing forward on this and trying to discover what it was in the original for many years because I read this text and it shook me. This four Acts four twelve. There's only one name given among men under heaven, and that one name is not written in most translations. Mm. It isn't, and that's because the dragon has been—he's <laughs> been in charge of the religious community, and he's—he's uh, he's able to deceive us because he's a very ancient being. He's not happy about this video. Mm. He's certainly not, this, this enemy is not happy about this. So uh, if there's trouble, see, this is the first three letters of his name, the true name, Yahoo. There it is. And it's very simple. But the identity thief doesn't want you to know that, you know. See, this is what he's put in place in the translations. He's put this word, B-A-A-L, the Hebrew is translated, the meaning is L-O-R-D. You can look it up. Look it up in Webster's. Look B-A-A-L up in Webster's Dictionary or any Wikipedia or uh, Dictionary 
online, it'll tell you that it means this. And that's not good because it's removed his name. In fact, the uh, preface of your translation will probably re reveal that. Mm. <laughs> so we shouldn't put ourselves in a place where we are um, judging or making a mind up about something that, uh, you know, back when I was saying about the healings, it's not for us to decide. Because that's a bad thing, isn't it? Right. Declaring, that, declaring something that might be of Yahuwah, declaring that it's a demon, that's a bad thing. Right. Just leave it alone. Yeah. That's not, it's not evidence. That's not evidence. But what is evidence is the pure research that you do that digs into the source languages. And when you look into the source languages and you find the, the letters and you say, wait a minute, these people have done some corrupting of the text. They, they corrupted it. And the, and, the, and the Hebrews, I mean, the, the Jewish community did it too. They corrupted it too with this word. This is a device that's meant to mean something that's not good. And they took it, and, and they're doing it laughingly because, you know, it's not good. So the Jewish people are just one tribe, aren't they? Yeah, they are only one tribe. There's still, what, 12 more? Yeah, there's like 12 more. They're lost. Uh, yeah, and they're lost to themselves, but Yahuwah knows who they are. And that's what he's doing today. He's calling them out as he said he would do in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and, uh, and Deuteronomy chapter 30 and, and uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and Acts chapter 15. And, and uh, there's all these places where he says he's going to reach back out. And, and even the letter to, that James wrote, or Yaakov, Yahushua's half-brother, he's writing him to the lost tribes. And this... Video is for the lost tribes, the scattered tribes of Israel, the, the people who are scattered that are returning to the covenant. And uh, they're being restored, and there's two things that the Nazarim do primarily, and they watch over the name and the covenant. And, of course, the name is what we were dealing with here and in the last uh, episode uh, of this. So the name is, like, really important. Mm. So this guy here can't trick us. Hmm. So I was thinking, He's really. I was thinking the other day. Um, what's the big deal with the Jews? They're always going on about this, and they're always going. And I know the Holocaust was a horrendous thing, but it occurred to me that the thing that we take for granted, you know, somewhere to live, they've never had that as a people, um, have they? They're, and so the, there's all these arguments. And are we going into the nation? Are we coming out of the nation? We're fighting about the nation. We're and you, someone all the way down here, you think, what's the big deal? Well, because as a people, they're just trying to settle down and, and have a country like everyone else has. And all these weird words, they're not weird, you know, Yeshayahu and all these original words. There's been a massive attack long before the Holocaust to try and get rid of everything that was even vaguely Hebrew sounding, isn't there? Big attack against the Hebrew. They're replacing all the names, not just the Messiahs. Yeshayahu, yeah. and you know, all the prophets' names have been replaced. Well, part of the trick is, of course, that people are looking at land and they're saying, well, that's the land. And it is. It's the promised land. But you see, they're regathered to the land prematurely. And the Orthodox rabbis know that they're regathered prematurely. The scriptures do say that they will be regathered. But it doesn't say they were gather themselves. And that's what's happened. Uh, the United Nations was formed in 1947. And that was actually the action of a group, a, a coterie of internationalists, globalists, that were seeking global domination. And they were called the Council on of Foreign Relations. And this is a, a very secret group. And the members are, are, are globalists. They're people that want to control the world. Because, see, back in the uh, earlier part of the 19th century, or the 20th century, the uh, League of Nations was formed. And it was uh, set up in order to set up a, a, a world, uh, you know, a world uh, government. And it was after World War I. They didn't want any more wars, so they said, well, we're going to go ahead and form a because they were actually using that as a means to control the world. 
because they didn't they were scaring people and saying we we don't we don't want any more wars like that. Anyway, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations was formed to create uh, an interest in uh, a global government. That's why you hear this glo globalism stuff and, uh, the and the natural resources and all that. But uh, the fact is, the United Nations was the first thing that the Council on Foreign Relations created when they got formed. And the national and the and the United Nations is the intended global government. And they put it in New York City in order to form, uh, to warm up to the strongest government on the earth. And uh, because it, because the United States wouldn't join the League of Nations before. So that's what this is about. It's actually Satan's attempt to get all the world united and the United Religions Initiative and the World Bank system and all that stuff is under the United Nations. Mm. And and over that is the Council on Foreign Relations. And all these political leaders belong, of all the parties, belong to this Council on Foreign Relations, which is over everything. They're globalists. They're all doing it. They're all billionaires. They're all uh, basically in control of the entire world. And uh, there's a very small group of people that are running everything. It's not the Jews. That's a lie. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the nation of Israel is actually the only wall that is holding back the waves of the Islamists who would otherwise just crash through and just destroy the rest of the world. You know, but when that falls, it's going to be really serious. But, uh, but Satan doesn't care. He, he doesn't care about life. He'd like to see all of Yahuwah's creation destroyed. He's, a, he's Yahuwah's enemy. And uh, we're the uh, the watchmen. We're the Nazarene. And we're raising up, well, Yahushua is raising us up in the last days in order to restore a remnant to his covenant. In order that, uh, that the end will come and there will be a resurrection. You know, and there will be a very few number in that resurrection. It isn't going to be anything like the Christians have been taught. They're being misguided, you know, and that's sad. But we're we're wanting to see more people get involved in the covenant, but they they're they're taught against the covenant. They're being vaccinated constantly against the name and the covenant. And it says in Revelation twice that the first fruits group is going to be those who obey the commandments of Elohim and hold to the testimony of Yahushua. Those are the two things that they do, and that's what we do. So the Christians, yeah. the Christians are having a problem with the covenant, and the Jews are having a problem with the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the thing of it is, though, the, uh, the nation of Israel is a government, and it's, uh, it, that's all it is, but it was actually facilitated by the United Nations. The United Nations regathered them. Mm. That's what mm. happened. Mm. And the, the Orthodox rabbis know that it's not good because this is not of Yahuwah. This is something that's done by the arm of man. And that's mm. not going to do it. When Yahuwah regathers all of his people to the land, we will actually sit down and lie down in peace and there will never be a threat ever again. And that's what he prophesied. But that's not the way it is now. No. They're being attacked from without and from within. Uh, you know, it's just wrong. But you see, the, the name is the key. The name is the key. And if you could actually overcome the uh, deceptions and not call on this name, this English name, or the, but, but that means this, <laughs> you know, and, and, and call on the true name that was written at Sinai, you know, it's in the covenant. Then that's the name. It's mm -hmm. Yahuwah. Yahoo. Yahuwah. And uh, and it's in the it's in the son's name. Yahoo Sha. Yahoo is our deliverer. He's one being. He became flesh and he died for our sins. He was resurrected on the third day after the third day, and he's alive. 
Mm. And uh, he's living in his people. We're his temple. Mm. And we're out here pleading with you, going, come on. You know, it's this is the truth. You know, mm. it's not a religion. It's uh, it's reality, you know. But uh, So what is the connection between um, the word Messiah or Mashiach, um, which I think has something to do with anointed one, and Christ. Why don't you use the word Christ? Well, for the main reason is because it's Greek. There would be no reason for me to use Korean, is there? <laughs> Greek is no more important than Korean. Uh, Greek is not uh, the language that we are expecting. It was a language that was facilitated, though, because it was common to the people all over that area of the earth at that time to spread the message. Uh, Paul uh, was speaking in that language and uh, was able to comprehend and communicate with people in that language. And Yahuwah himself said that he would speak to this people in a babbling, stammering lip and communicate the truth to them. But he said in Zephaniah 3, 9 that he was going to restore a pure lip, you know, in the last days, and that's what's happening. So the last days, we're going to call upon his name. His name has been concealed. There's been a famine of his word. His covenant is his word, and contained within his word is the tip of the sword, which is the first, the first phrase in the, in the covenant is, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And that's the tip of the sword. Now, if you take that name out and put, I am the Lord, your Elohim, well, or your, <laughs> well, who's that? Well, that's someone else. That's the identity thief. And that's what the identity thief is trying to do, is to blunt the tip of the sword so that it will not pierce. It has no power without the name. <laughs> because the name is, is the true power. That's what the demons tremble at, you know. The, the demons know his name. It's very hard and to when overcome, we're immersed, very hard to yeah, overcome when, without the name. When we're immersed in his name, when we go into the water calling upon his true name, and we're sealed in our foreheads, knowing who the one is that we worship, like Eliyahu or Elijah at Mount Carmel was disputing. How long will you falter or waver between two opinions? Are you going to worship the Lord, or are you going to worship Yahuwah? And then when they saw the fire fall, when he said the name Yahuwah, then that was it. They said, Yahuwah, Hua Elohim. That's what they said. They said, Yahuwah is Elohim. They didn't say B-A-A-L or the Lord. Is Elohim, you know. Amazing. Hey, it, it's early where you are, isn't it? No, it's, it's lunchtime. Early. It's lunchtime. Lunchtime. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to share also uh, the after you obviously watched the last episode, you came up with this um, thing about the symbols of a yod, hey, ua, and hey. I love the way you wrote it, and you touched on it, but I don't think we actually made it clear. In the last episode, you said yeah. uh, there's more to his name being revealed all the time. The idea that the letters seem to speak, and you've written, "Behold, the nailed hands" is a very interesting aspect. So, uh, go through what the symbols mean and how you came up with "Behold, the nailed hands." Well, yes, yeah, so this is uh, this is something that a lot of the Nazarene were finding out today that. This, these two letters mean windows. These are the hays are windows. They're things that you look out of. The hay and the hay. There's two of them, which gives you the idea that there's, you're looking out of eyes. And, it, and, it, and, and some people have said that it means to behold the nail or nailed. This is the word for hook or nail hands, because this has a component, this, this uh, yod means ten, so it means two hands, not just one, or it implies two hands, because it, it has a numeric value of ten. This has a numeric value of five, and the nail, or the hook, 
the UA has a, a numeric value of 6. So if you add it up, all these letters, they have a value of 26. So whenever I see the number 26, I go, yeah, there's his name. I, I, I'm reminded of his name. But the thing of it is, some people in the Nazarene community have been promoting the idea that his name means it's a, a revelation of who he is. His name is based upon Haya, or Hua. Haya is actually, it's actually a Hey, Yod, Hey, Haya, which means to exist. But this word means, in three tenses, it means I was, I am, and I will be. It's future and past and present. So it has three, not that he's a trinity, it has to do with omnitemporality. Omni he's throughout time, and he exists and under his own power. But if you look at his name and his components, it has another interpretation. Behold, the nailed hands. And that's really important because... It, it reveals his identity of what he's done for us. Because when we, see, when we see him, when we see each other in the world to come, we're not going to be distorted and cancerous, and we won't have aged. We'll be amazing. But there will be one among us that will have scars. Hmm. And we will behold his nail hand. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's his name, Yahusha, and uh, people. And uh, people want to transliterate it into English in different ways, but that's his name. You know, there's no doubt about it. And uh, we don't have to argue about how we want to uh, change it into English letters or Latin letters or Korean letters. But you see. These are the these are the letters, you know, and I'm not lying about this. This is something that is used 216 times in the Tanakh. The Tanakh is the Torah, the Nabiim, and the Kethubim, the, the Torah, the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. And this is the Aramaic script. Yeah. At the burning bush, did uh, Mo, did you hear say to Moshe, um, I am that I am, tell them, that I am sent you, or did he actually give him the name Yahuwah? Did he reveal his name straight up to Moshe? Yes, at uh, Exodus 3, or Shemoth, uh, 3, chapter four, uh, verse uh, 14 and 15, he says, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, meaning I am who I, who I am. And then he the, he's interpreting that, and then he then in the next sentence he says, Yahuwah, tell the children of Israel that my name is Yahuwah, and I have sent you, and I am the uh, Elohim of your fathers. And uh, so Ahaya Asher Ahaya, like I said, the root of his name is Haya, mm -hmm. and it means existence. Mm -hmm. But it means I exist, and it means I am who I am. Asher means who. I am who I am. And it's kind of convenient that it is very closely related to the name Yahuwah. But uh, yeah, Moshe said who, if, if the children ask me what, the what your name is, what shall I tell them? In other words. And uh, he said, the first thing he said was Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya. And then he said, Tell them Yahuwah has sent you. Hmm. Yahuwah. And then he uses that name Yahuwah spelled with those four letters. You know, uh, I've shown it to you many times here. <laughs> there it is. Yod, He, Ua, Yahu, Ah, Yahuwah. He uses this 6,823 times, at least. Some say several hundred more times if they've tampered with the script, and I don't think they have, but many people suspect that, but I don't suspect it. But I've, I've, I've actually tallied these up in the concordances, and uh, that's how many times it, it's used. 6,823 times 
this name, and it's the only name. And of course, the Messiah's name contains these first three letters, Yahoo, and then the last, uh, the last two letters is this, Sha, which means deliverance. So there's, uh, there's his name, right there's there. There's a big difference when you call upon the real name. Inside. Yeah, it makes you feel like you know him. He he revealed his name to me the first day that I uh, that I started reading scripture, and I was thirty five years old. And uh, you know, when I saw this had been replacing his name, I knew right away that there was a problem. I didn't know that the source of it was this, but uh, that was traumatic. And I was, I was very disturbed when I saw that they'd taken the name out and put in a device, which is the same thing that they did when they took uh, and replaced it in the Greek with Christograms. <laughs> you know, what? You know, and they put bars over it saying, this is a deity's name, or it's a very important thing. And then they did the same thing with the word Christos, which is actually not uh, pertinent at all. But this is... a uh, taking the first letter and the last letter of the Greek and changing it into this form in order for the copyists to have it a little more convenient uh, time. Well, what they did is they reduced his name. They, they compressed it down from the Greek is what they did. It's a Christogram, and it's, from, it's only in the, in the Codex Sinaiticus. But uh, that's what the monks use, so, you know. So, um, when, so in Matthew 28, when he says, go into all the nations, immersing people into the names of the Father and the Son and the set apart Spirit. No, it says the name, not right. names, not mm. plural. Oh, I got it says, go into all the nations. <laughs> mm. Go into all the nations and immerse them in the name of of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you to obey. That's very simple. So we have to teach them the name, the one name, and the covenant. You know. So when we teach them about Yahuwah as the Deliverer, we're, we're saying this, this name right here is Yahuwah as our Deliverer. That's what it is. You know, and this is the name above every name right here. So his name is contained in this name. See? Mm. That's not a problem. Now, what we are saying, and Yahushua said, we would not see him again until we said, Baruch Haba Bashem. Yahuwah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. There it is. Hallelujah. He came in this name. Mm. That's it. And that's mm. wonderful. Now, if you say another name, <laughs> oh no, it's just wrong. You can't say, well, uh, he came in this name. I see. <laughs> I see. Or Iota Sigma. Huh? That's meaningless. JC. <laughs> somebody's, somebody's trying to trick us. You know. Amazing. Oh, well. It's well, amazing. And it's, it's simple. But we can unravel it, you know. Uh, what an amazing full topic. <laughs> We've just scratched the surface, haven't we? Really? Yeah. There's a, there's a really the the tricks that they've pulled on us and to say well it doesn't matter what we call him you think <laughs> come on you know I mean you know this word is in this word mm. you know I mean really let's not do this mm. let's just not do this let's not do this that's just wrong you know. Uh, when the translators did, get a copy of the Besora or the ISR's uh, scriptures, the scriptures, and uh, they've replaced the name. Of course, when you read the scriptures, you can replace it yourself. If you've got a King James Version or some other translation like an NIV, you can just say, well, whenever you see the word the Lord, just put 
Yahuwah in there. You know, and that's all it is. That's all it is. When, it, when Psalm 23 is, is written, it says, Yahuwah is my shepherd. It doesn't say B-A-A-L is my shepherd. You know. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really a, a, it is the strongest of the strongholds. This is the most powerful stronghold because the war in heaven is in the mind. And when they got when they got a control of our minds, they've got uh, that's the battlefield, you know. And when we can overcome that, and as long as we can love each other, you know, and not get upset if somebody's using another transliteration, there's no reason for us to throttle them and say you've got it wrong. You're an evil person. Well, <laughs> just say, uh, yeah. Well, you're not using that other thing. You know, at least, and they're they're coming along on the road. You know, they're on the path. Hmm. Anyway, is there any other any other technical questions about this? Oh, I think you. I have uh, a lot of <laughs> flashcards. Haven't you? Uh, don't you call them flashcards over there? <laughs> That's what you call them. Yeah, I hadn't even know what you, you call them flashcards. Yeah. I uh, I like them, but, uh, but you can I buy spend some time. You can buy boxes of cards with uh, the alphabet on it for children um, in different colors yeah. and numbers, and they're called flashcards. Teach a child how to, how to read. Yeah. So. Well, there's nothing wrong with adults doing that either. I mean, <laughs> people could take this particular video and back it up and look at it again and keep looking at it, keep looking at it until they get it, you know, mm. because those letters are not going to change. The Greek is still the Greek, and it's pretty useless. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew is the real thing. It's the what they call the uh, Kodesh, the Lashai Kodesh, the, the set-apart tongue. And when you look at that, you don't have to use this Greek stuff. You know, mm -hmm. What is that? Let me explain it to you in Greek. <laughs> well, let's not. Let's not do that. Let, let's not get distorted. You know, like this, this, uh, these uh, Christograms things. Uh, take his name out. You know, what is that about? If you're if you're going for the one name and then you remove it, you know, that, that's that, there's got to be a reason for that. See, Yahushua wouldn't do that. He said in the in, in what was it? Yahukan or John chapter seventeen? I have revealed your name to those that you gave me out of the world. You know, and uh, we're revealing. Back, back, we're revealing it again, you know. And he he prayed that we might be one in his name, you know. In other words, we'd all be in unity and in love, and and we'd be happy about it, not arguing about it, saying you're not using a V or you're not using a J. <laughs> well, can you let that go, you know, and say, well, is his Hebrew is his name? We speak one language, but we are supposed to be learning the set-apart tongue. You know, the Hebrew should be precious to us. Mm. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very. And it's not scary. It's it's foreign to us, but it's not scary. It's like uh, just because we were taught distortion and corruption, we can overcome that. You know, mm. what else is there to overcome? You know, I mean, corruption distortion you know so if we overcome it we say well let's just go straight back and there it is uh, and not use modern Hebrew because modern Hebrew has been changed as well to some extent you know yeah well thank you brother for making this all so clear it's amazing <laughs> well Wonderful. it's uh, it is uh, it is an, an article there's an article that I uh, made available on this subject that people can download, and it's called Stronghold, the name. Actually, the thing is, is called The Real Name of the Messiah. And it's, a, it's actually a four-page document that uh, explains all these scriptures. It's got Zechariah 3. It's got, uh, it's got the place where Moshe changed the name of the... Son of Nun here, Numbers, chapter, well, I can't even read this. It's so little. <laughs> but, uh, 
It says uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. And if you read it, you'll see that he changed the name of the son of Nun, uh, or Nun. And Acts 7, 45, and Hebrews 4, 8, uh, where the reference to this man is given, and then you can look up the Greek underlying text. And then, of course, in this document, I've also included all these Hebrew terms, and uh, it's easy for you to understand. And it's uh, you can download it for free. You know, it's mm. called the real name of the Messiah. Mm. And uh, it's uh, really simple, and it's going to break the stronghold, you know, Unless you're just dead set against it, and you're saying, "No, I like my English, and I don't, and my translation is what it is." Believe me, you should distrust the translators. Mm. Those people are not uh, quite. I mean, a lot of them are not spirit-filled. They're actually people that know a little bit about languages, but they're not guided by the by the Ruach Hakodesh, the Spirit of Messiah. He's not in them working. To give you the truth, you know, you have to dig that back out and replace it, you know, and uh, that's why the scriptures by ISR and the Besora, which we distribute, is so uh, amazing. And there's many others that are fine too that are out there that are other groups have put out. So uh, don't be afraid of those. And, uh, oh, and the HRV, the HRV is downloadable. The Hebrew Roots version, HRV. Just look up HRV, and uh, James Trim has done a good job on that, and he's up, up, updated it so that it's uh, even more correct than ever. Yes. So uh, we hope that gets out there. We also distribute that at Torah, TorahZone.net. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have to head off now, brother. <laughs> it's uh, been amazing. Uh, you and I'll keep you posted. Well, I'll keep you posted about the uh, the website, and uh, if it's done before the weekend, maybe the girls can do their show. Otherwise, it might have to be next week. Okay, and then Adam's going to be sending you over the new War in Heaven video too. Beautiful. Fantastic. Okay, well, we love you, and take care. Love you, mate. Have a good uh, right. night. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye now. Yeah,